Hi guys, I hope that you're having a wonderful day. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to discuss and give thanks to some of the many luxury fails that I've had in the past and how these fails have helped future purchases and how I shop. I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure and give it a thumbs up. And without further ado, let's get started, shall we? So I thought that I would categorize everything just because it makes it a little bit easier for me. That way I'm not all over the place. So for the first category, I wanted to discuss silhouettes or styles. Now I do have a few different handbags that I wanted to talk about. The first one being clutches. So as many of you know, I am always attracted to clutches. Um, it's something that I always, always, always end up gravitating towards. However, clutches never end up working out for me uh, because I've come to the realization that I need some kind of a strap. I need something to put on my shoulder. And with clutches, I feel like every time I have them underneath my arm, I feel like I end up gripping a little, <laughs> a little too much and I kind of tense up just because I fear that they might end up slipping out, although they've never slipped out, but still, here I am just kind of like, uh, <laughs> you're not gonna go anywhere type of thing. Now, in the past, I've had the Saint Laurent monogram clutch. Uh, I loved it, but same thing, I sold it because um, I just didn't find it to be too comfortable. The next three um, that I'm gonna share, uh, they're technically a small leather good and they're a, they're a toiletry, but I ended up using them as clutches and um, I, I'd buy them, I'd sell it, I'd buy it, I'd sell it, I'd buy it and sell it. And I'm talking about the Louis Vuitton Toiletry 26. So first I had it in the monogram canvas, I said I was gonna use it as a clutch. I used it as a clutch, but it drove me nuts. I ended up selling it. Uh, then I ended up repurchasing it again, if you will, in the Tahitian Damia Azor. Uh, same thing, I was like, this time it's gonna be different, it's gonna be different. No, it wasn't different. I didn't end up using it. Then uh, at the same time, before I sold that one, I ended up buying the Pochette Voyage from Louis Vuitton in the Monogram Eclipse, which is very similar. It's pretty much the same silhouette, only the Pochette Voyage has the fabric lining and it has card slots. Um, but same thing happened. That one I ended up using the most as a clutch, but still I just, I felt very uncomfortable. So needless to say, I sold all four of them. Uh, they are no longer in my collection and it is now a style that I appreciate from afar. Now the craziest thing is that I still find myself looking at clutches, kind of like the Louis Vuitton Dauphine um, in the 26, or the it's like the Toiletry 26, same thing. I was like, ooh, I really like it. This time it'll be different. This time it'll be different. But then I'm like, no, no more. <laughs> they obviously don't end up working out for you. You know, and I know some people have said that you can end up putting an organizer in there that has a, you know, a strap on it or what have you, but for me, I just prefer to have either a shoulder bag or a tote or something like that instead of a clutch. I think they're gorgeous and I can appreciate them, but unfortunately they don't end up working out for me. So it's something that um, <laughs> I just, I sit there, I look at and I'm just like, oh, I wish, I wish it worked out, but I just, uh, <laughs> they don't work out. You know what I'm saying? Another bag that I have in this category is the Chanel Le Boy bag. And this is in here because of comfort zone. So as many of you guys know, I did have a very, very intense love-hate relationship with this bag for many, many years. And the reason why I say comfort zone is because for the most part, I do end up going for classic styles, for classic silhouettes. It's something that I'm always attracted to. And, um, I think it's always fun to try out different things, to go out of your comfort zone, absolutely, because you never know what's out there unless you try it, right? Well, when it comes to the Chanel Le Boy bag, I knew, I knew in the back of my mind that it was maybe a little too out of my comfort zone. It was, I mean, it's a beautiful bag. It's very edgy, um, you know, and the fact that they have so many different, um, so many different colors and so many different variations that you can go for, I think is amazing. But I knew like in, in my heart of hearts, in the back of my mind, when I got this bag, even though I was excited, I was like, you know what? It's, it's a little too out there. It's not really for me. It's not really for me. And when I have, to, I mean, when I sat there and I have to convince myself that this will be good for me, that can't be a good sign. I mean, I'm all for trying things, but when you're, when you're like, okay, do this, do this, and pushing and pushing and pushing, I mean, there's only so much pushing that you can do until you realize that, again, it's not necessarily for you. So I had this bag for what? four years, four and a half years. I used it a handful of times. And every time I used it, I'm like, this is going to be different. It's going to be different. Um, and what would end up happening? I would gripe about it every single time that I ended up using it, you know? So now when it comes to wanting to add handbags to my collection, if it is something out of my comfort zone, I will definitely take a look at that. But if it gets to the point where I have to convince myself 
this will be different, this will be different, kind of pump myself up to go for it, then I realize that no, <laughs> it's my gut instinct that's really kind of pushing against, you know, the other part of my singing heart or my brain that's saying it's not going to be for you, it's not going to be for you, and maybe I should listen to that. You know, so um, even though it was a roller coaster of emotions with that bag, I definitely, I'm happy that I did have it in my collection. It's made me realize how I feel about kind of going out of my comfort zone. Now, another bag that I have in this category um, is the Louis Vuitton croissant bag. So you guys have heard me talk about this bag a few times. I had it many, many years ago. And um, from the moment I got this bag, um, it drove me nuts just because of the silhouette that it had. Uh, you know, it kind of had like a half circle or half moon uh, shape to it. And every time that I would use it, all of my items would just kind of go smack in the middle. They'd kind of just collect in the middle. Um, so it got to the point where it got to be super, super fussy. I ended up getting rid of the bag. Um, and I'm happy that I did because now I feel like whenever I look at a circular handbag or when I look at, for example, the Dior saddle bag, I refer to it as the kidney bag. Um, I'm always, I always kind of think, well, you know, I really like it. Maybe I should go for it. But it always reminds me of my experience with, uh, with the croissant bag. And I just feel like it might be too fussy or it might drive me nuts to get my items or maybe everything will collect in the middle and I won't be able to see everything at a glance. I'm sure you can end up using a purse organizer for it, but for the most part, it's just that circular shape and the the kind of um, half moon kidney type of silhouette that it has, uh, hasn't worked out for me and for my lifestyle. So when it comes to the Dior Saddleback, I definitely appreciate it from afar. I think it is beautiful. I mean, it is a classic style, but I know for myself, it's something that doesn't work out or um, the Louis Vuitton Boite Chapeau, regardless of the size, I'm obsessed with that bag, you know? And I've tried it on many, many of times. And I sit there and I kind of pump myself up. I do the same thing that I did with the with the Chanel Le Boy bag, but then I'm like, no, <laughs> this style doesn't work out for me. I don't know. I probably sound like a lunatic, but I mean, these are some of the things that go through my mind when it comes to, uh, to purchasing handbags. So because of those silhouettes um, that were beautiful, unfortunately, they didn't work out, but they have really helped me you know, when it comes to future purchases. That brings us to resale value. So I learned a valuable lesson when it came to resale value because of Gucci. So back in the day, I used to have a few Gucci bags. I liked them, I thought that they were great. I definitely used them, uh, not too, too much, but I did enjoy them. And then I ended up falling out of love with them. So I figured, all right, I'm just gonna go to sell these bags. I went online just to get an idea as to what they were selling for and things like that. And I got hit with the harsh reality of resale value because some of these bags were 800 plus and they were selling for 125, 150 at most. And I just remember looking at it like, wait, what? <laughs> what, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? You know, because these are $800. How is it that they're selling for 125? I, I remember seeing one of the ones that I had for like 95 bucks. And I'm like, that. there's there's no way. There is no way. And when it comes to luxury goods, many of you guys have heard me talk about resale value. And that's something that I definitely take into consideration when it comes to adding new bags into my collection. I do a lot more research and I do like to go on the pre-love market just to get an idea as to what these items are selling for, just in case I decide to sell them down the future. If they're not a forever bag or if I fall out of love with them or what have you, I just like to have an idea again as to what they could end up uh, selling for, how they how will they end up holding their resale value. And with Gucci, it definitely didn't. And it got to the point where um, I avoided buying Gucci for for years for years because of that same experience, you know? And uh, now at the same time, even though as, as I said before, I do take um, resale value into consideration, there's also another aspect that I take into consideration. If I, if I go for a bag that I absolutely love and if it's a bag that I use to death and I'm just like, you know what, this is gonna be a forever bag, it's gonna be a forever bag. And let's say five years down the line, it turns out it's not a forever bag and I don't wanna use it anymore. If I go to sell it and I don't get this awesome quote, I'm okay with that too because I enjoyed the bag. Now I know that it might seem like I'm kind of contradicting myself, uh, but with resale value, I feel like if it's a bag that 
um, I like for the moment or there's the potential that I might end up selling it in the future. I'd like to take that into consideration. But if it's a forever bag that I absolutely love, but then I end up changing my mind throughout the years, um, that, you know, the money that I end up getting from it, should I sell it, I more so consider it a bonus. Again, because I enjoyed it, because I rocked that bag to the fullest and things like that, you know? So, um, with resale value, sometimes I feel like it can be tricky. It's um, sometimes I like to refer to it as the gray area because you never really know how you'll feel about something. You might love it now and you might hate it two years down the road. Um, but yeah, with uh, with Gucci, I learned uh, the, the most valuable lesson when it came to resale value because I couldn't wrap my brain around the prices that they had. You know, then I looked at Chanel and I looked at handbags from Louis Vuitton and they ended up holding their resale value a lot better, you know, versus Gucci or versus a Celine or any of those bags. Um, but yeah, I will, I will never, ever forget the first time I saw, I was like, wait a minute, that's gotta be wrong. I thought maybe it was, it was like busted or maybe it was like torn or something. No. They were still in great condition, but they just, uh, some, some fashion houses don't hold their resale value as well as others, you know? So it's a matter of personal preference when it comes to how you view buying handbags. If you buy them because you love them and you want to enjoy them, and should you sell them in the future, it's a bonus, or if you take resale value into consideration. I definitely see both sides. But now, thanks to Gucci, if I do decide to add something to my collection, if I do think about it a little bit more when it comes to resale value, I know that might be the potential that I might sell it down the line if I fall out of love with it, or if I just see something that completely just captivates me, I love the color, I love the size, and it might not have the best resale value, but at least I will enjoy the bag to the fullest the time that I have it, then I'm okay with that as well. But um, <laughs> it's definitely um, it's definitely a, uh, you know, a tricky line. Next category, size. So in the past, I had the Louis Vuitton Classic Speedy 35 in monogram and Damia Ben. And I remember thinking, go big or go home, go big or go home, because it's a $20 difference between the sizes. And I think it still is now. So the 25 was $20 less than the 30. The 30 was $20 less than the 35. And I just kept thinking, why would I want to go for something a little bit smaller when for $20, I can go for a bigger bag. And even though it's only a five centimeter difference between them, I still kept thinking, go bigger, go home, go bigger, go home. But I definitely realized that go bigger, go home doesn't always end up working out for me when it comes to handbags, because I found out that with the 35, I felt like it was a little bit too overwhelming. And even though it was a small price difference and a, um, a small size difference, it actually ended up being a huge difference to me. I feel like between a 35 and the 30, there's a world of difference. I know some people might not see it that way, but that's how I personally do. And I felt, again, that it was a little too overwhelming and it wasn't as comfortable to use on the crook of my arm or as a hand carry bag. Uh, so I ended up, uh, a few years later, I decided to sell them and instead I decided to go for 30s. Uh, and the 30 for me is definitely what ends up working out the best for my lifestyle. I really like the size. It's not too overwhelming overwhelming. I can still end up carrying everything that I need. And it's, uh, it's a lot more comfortable to use on the crook of my arm or as a hand carry bag. So that one definitely ended up, um, working out the best. Now, because of the 35, this kind of came into play with the Dior book toe because last year, uh, with the larger size, I kept thinking about getting the larger one because I believe it's a hundred dollar difference between the, the small and the large, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but I kept thinking for a hundred dollars, I get a bigger bag. I can get a bigger bag. Um, but then I automatically just went back to the whole 30 and 35. Uh, so I ended up waiting and I ended up drooling over pictures of the Dior book toe when I saw them on Instagram. And then when the small came about, I went to try it on and I fell in love. Uh, it was perfect. It was exactly what would end up working out for my lifestyle uh, because I wanted to use this more as an everyday bag. And the larger one, I personally saw it more as a travel bag. Although I know that there are a lot of people that end up using the larger one for uh, a daily bag, but I personally wanted something smaller, something that wasn't as overwhelming, you know? So again, even though it was, it's a hundred dollar difference between the two, for me personally, it's a world of difference uh, on how I end up incorporating them and how they end up uh, just being on my body frame. Uh, but yeah, I was just, I was this close to just going for the larger one because again, go bigger, go home, go bigger, go home. But um, 
that doesn't always end up working out with everything. It might work out for some things and for some, you know, for some people, but when it comes to handbags, um, that definitely isn't the case for me. Let's talk jewelry, specifically luxury fashion house costume jewelry. So this is something that I touched base on my Instagram earlier this week. And as many of you know, I love costume jewelry. I always have, I always will. It definitely has my heart. Um, I really like the pieces that are like so over the top, super gaudy, just very obnoxious and sparkly. You guys know I'm a magpie. Um, but I've definitely noticed that as the years have gone by and more so now, I tend to go for fine jewelry over costume jewelry. Uh, but still, when it comes to luxury fashion house costume jewelry, I definitely ended up getting a little bit carried away a few years ago, especially with Chanel, either with their brooches or with their earrings. I would go into the boutiques and um, I really love the way that they look, especially because of the boutique lights. They make everything look fantastic, right? So I ended up, you know, scoping out a couple earrings and um, I'm like, oh, these are great. These are great. So I ended up adding a little bit more to my collection and a little bit more and a little bit more. And I really thought about going for a Chanel um, necklace. Um, I know that they have different ones, you know, throughout the seasons and they also have their classics, but I definitely wanted to go for the faux pearl necklace with the, you know, with the uh, crystals on it and whatnot. I thought it would be fantastic. Unfortunately, I didn't have the best experience when it came to my Chanel jewelry because either the stones would end up falling out of the earrings or the posts would end up breaking. I also had the backing on one of the brooches completely break off. And uh, there were times that I did take them into the boutique and I asked them about getting them fixed and they quoted me it would be X amount of money. It would take six to eight weeks, you know? And I know some of you guys have told me that you've taken your fashion jewelry into the boutiques and you didn't have to, you know, pay for it to be repaired, which I think is amazing. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for me. So because of that, it got to the point where I just that I was just thinking, okay, the price doesn't justify the quality that it is, especially because it's just costume jewelry. Some of these pieces, you know, are like 1500 bucks. They can go up to $2,000. It depends on the, um, you know, on the, on the season and, uh, the type of details that it has. But I just thought for that amount of money, I could go for 18 karat gold. I can go for diamonds. I can go for fine jewelry instead of just costume jewelry that, um, you know, in my experience, doesn't necessarily have the best quality. You know, now I'm not trying to take anything away from it by any means whatsoever because they are absolutely beautiful, but I just don't feel the same way about fashion jewelry as I did before. And don't get me wrong, I've gone into boutiques in the past, either from Dior or Chanel, or I've gone into Louis Vuitton, and I do look at their fashion jewelry, and I think it's amazing, and I am tempted. I'm like, ooh, maybe I should go for it, maybe it'll be different, maybe this, maybe that but then I remember the experiences that I've had with the pieces that I own and I just figured you know what the quality that they are and the materials that they are don't warrant the price point for me anymore you know but like I said before they are absolutely gorgeous and they shine like crazy but um, you know now if something were to happen to them I'm not gonna go through the trouble of getting them fixed if if you know something breaks if uh, some of the stones fall off it is what it is so be it uh, just moving forward I know it's something that um, I'm not necessarily going to go for anymore. Next category, material. So about five or six years ago, I used to have two Louis Vuitton Alma PMs in Verney. I had one in Cerise and I also had it in the Noir Magnetic. And uh, I really came to terms with the fact that this material doesn't really end up working out for my lifestyle for a few different reasons. First and foremost, I really didn't like the fact that the clear coating that Verney pieces have can end up dulling over time or they can end up yellowing, especially if you have a lighter handbag. I also didn't like the fact that uh, because of the clear coating, it can also pick up color transfer very easily, either from clothing or if you were to set it down on a magazine or something like that that has print, it ends up kind of sticking to it. And it's not the easiest color transfer to take off if you can take it off at all. And uh, what was the last straw for me were the fingerprints that you would end up getting or that you would end up seeing when it comes to this type of uh, material. I didn't like the fact that you could see the streaks on there, more so on the Noir Magnetic that I had than the Cerise. And I would end up carrying a microfiber cloth with me just to clean off those fingerprints. And I know that's gonna sound so extreme, but that's honestly what I would do because I couldn't stand the look of them, you know? So uh, for me, vernis is a material that I definitely, or patent leather is something that I definitely appreciate from afar. And there are times that I will go into boutiques or I have gone into boutiques in the past 
from different fashion houses and I see their patent leather pieces or their vernis pieces and I'm just like, oh my gosh, they're so beautiful. Again, because the colors look so vibrant, they look so vivid. Uh, but then it just takes me back to my experience with uh, with the ones that I had in my, in my collection before. I also had small leather goods and the same thing, I wouldn't use them as much. Again, just the, the fingerprints or the fact that the, the clear coating would end up dulling or the fact that it ends up just kind of absorbing that color transfer very, very easily was a, a material that I definitely um, end up appreciating from afar because it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't work out and it just ends up driving me nuts. But it is beautiful nonetheless. And that brings me to my last category, light colors. So in the past, I had the Chanel GST or Grand Shopping Toe in the Caviar Beige Clear with the silver hardware. This bag was absolutely beautiful. And I snagged it on the pre-love market. And I remember that when I was checking out, I was nervous because it was a lighter colored handbag and I know that I have a lot of dark colored clothing in my wardrobe. And I just kept thinking color transfer, color transfer. But instead I decided to ignore that and I decided to justify the bag. I sat there thinking, well, it's a great price. It's a color that you don't see too often, especially because it has the gray interior. And uh, I started thinking, you know, maybe it'll push me to go for a lighter wardrobe, maybe this, maybe that. And I started to make uh, promises to myself and I ended up buying the bag. So when I got it, I did end up using it, but I also noticed that if I would go out and if I came back home, I would switch out of it because I would end up freaking out about any type of color transfer. And I also noticed that if I had my outfit on for the day and I went to go reach for the bag, I decided to switch the bag instead of my outfit because I felt comfortable and instead of having to freak out about any type of color transfer. You know, so more and more that bag ended up sitting on my shelf and I mean, it was absolutely gorgeous, but needless to say, I ended up selling it. And because of that bag, it really solidified how I end up shopping for light colored handbags in the future and how I decide and what I decide to add to my collection next, because I do like light colored handbags. I'm always attracted to them. And um, if anything, I would prefer to go for something maybe a little bit smaller and something that has a friendlier price point, because I feel like with the huge sticker that the GST had, I felt like that made me a lot more more nervous to want to use it and um, I just kept thinking okay with the price point that it is if I do get any type of color transfer in a sense it's kind of ruining the bag because it's really hard to lift that or sometimes you can't lift it at all you know so again that's why it ended up sitting on the shelf but now I decide to go for a smaller handbag, something that again has a uh, has a friendlier price point so that way I can end up getting my fix. And the funniest thing is that one of my ultimate dream bags, a bag that I will never end up getting, is the Chanel uh, Classic Flap in white. I think that bag is stunning, but I know I would destroy it with the type of wardrobe that I have. You know, so it was just, I don't know if it was a combination of the fact that it was a larger handbag and it did have the caviar beige clear that made me so nervous or the fact that the price point that it was that again kind of added to the nervousness. Uh, but, um, you know, like I said before, was it beautiful? Absolutely. But um, when I kept thinking about using it with the type of wardrobe that I have, uh-uh, <laughs> no way. Uh -uh. I was just like, I can't do it. I can't do it. So the items that I discussed, I personally don't consider them to be regrets only because they've helped me pinpoint what does end up working out for me. Now I'm not sitting here saying, yes, it was amazing to lose X amount of money on something that I sold. Absolutely not. But I more so tend to look at it as a lesson learned, trial and error. And instead I give thanks to these items because now I can appreciate them from afar and it helps me to choose a little bit more wisely with future purchases and how I end up shopping. But that does it for my video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and I hope I was able to give you a little bit more information. And I'm curious, have you had any luxury fails that have helped you with future purchases? If you have, let us know in the comment section down below. But again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure and give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not, the choice is yours. Have a great day.